Media Podcast. Hey there, fellow adventurers. I'm Ian. And I'm Eric. And this is the Philo Mythia Podcast, your one stop shop for all things DD. From rules to art to DD lore, you'll find it here. And this week, we're going to build a one shot. So, uh, Ian, yeah. what is a one shot? Eric, a one shot. <laughs> A one shot is just one little adventure that has a beginning, middle, and it's done. Right. And ideally, it should, like the name suggests, it should happen over one session. Right. Beginning, middle, and end done. Some of our friends don't understand this, so I feel like this is a good time to kind of lay it out in terms of ideally what you want to happen. Right. If it goes over, the world's not going to end. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if you're enjoying this content, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It only takes a moment, and it really helps us out. And we actually really love the support. It gives us a little hit of dopamine every time. Uh, we love it. It's so and good. we love you. Yeah. We would kiss you, but that's inappropriate, so we won't. And you'll probably get us sick. You won't. Oh, well. All right. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Um, Welcome. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so we both have notes, and I feel like maybe let's just talk about our emerging philosophy. I think you and I are on the same page when it comes to here's what you have time for in a one shot. Absolutely. I think we we might slightly differ, but on very small things. So, on the details. But right. we're not worried about the details right now, right. just the broad the broad long strokes. Long. Rather than the fast jammies. <laughs> or the clappies, the grippies. The cla the grippy claps. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you got? Let's let's start with uh, what notes well, what notes you uh, wrote. I'd like to tell you that I thought I was super funny when I did this and I put one shot thoughts. I was like Ooh. Ooh. That sounds like a new new series. Ian's one shot thoughts. And I also wanted to spell it T H O T S. Just mm -hmm. to be gross. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I get you. But, I know what you're saying. You know. So my first idea within that framework of doing a one shot is you have, depending on how much time you have in a session, which is most people go three to four hours. We mm -hmm. can bring it down to three just as the average because that's a good solid session if it's tight. Mm -hmm. So I put four to five scenes max. Uh, is what you kind of would have time for. But leaning on four to five is some of those have to be pretty quick scenes. They mm -hmm. might even be sub scenes where there is a right. small like segue scene maybe. But I think you have a, a better number for what you can would consider the main scenes. What do you think, Eric? So I think scenes, you can have as many as you want but you really get three set pieces. Mm. And what I mean by that is let's say your one shot is the goblin steal the innkeeper's daughter or son, whatever you want it to be. Mm. There's a child that's kidnapped. They're going to be killed if the adventurers don't do something. So you get the tavern, maybe you get the woods, and you get the goblin cave. Mm. That's all you have time for. And there you could have a couple of scenes in the tavern. Right. You could have okay. them traveling to the forest, maybe that's another scene, and then one big scene with a combat in the the cave. Mm -hmm. So I don't think about it in terms of scenes, okay. but that's a good way. I think five is probably fair. I would agree with that. Five sure. scenes, yeah. yeah. Five scenes, three set pieces. Right. And you get one big combat, that's it. Mm. If you play D and D, you know one combat, a good sized combat that's challenging for whatever the party's level is. It's going to take you about forty five minutes to an hour. Absolutely. You could do a small one, like maybe they encounter one or two goblins on the forest path, maybe scouts or lookouts, and if they don't defeat them, it changes how ready the goblins are in the cave. Mm, that's good, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But that should be like one two rounds max. 10 minutes of real game time, you're done. Yeah. Um, I think this is the big stumbling block for a lot of new DMs is they think, myself included, when I first started DMing, oh, you could have like 
three or four combats in there. Ugh. Even the DMG is like an adventuring day. You have this many combats, and it's like, have you played D and D? It's not. <laughs> you get one per session usually. Yeah, for sure. It's because you know, and that's. I mean, if you have four players that are proficient in the game, you mm-hmm. might be able to squeeze two pretty big combats. But they, everyone needs to be super on it and know their character sheet, know how the game is played, and know all the things. And that's just not how it's done. You know what I mean? It's not how it's done. It isn't. And I think maybe if you had players who were not just proficient in the game, but knew how to work as a team, mm. which I would love it if if my players leaned into that more. Right. I don't think they think about it much. Right. I don't but, think that's a... But it's, it's most of the time like, oh, Billy's over here doing their own thing and, and Jeremy's over here blasting and casting. And there's no cohesive like, hey, let's let's think about what we're going to do and actually plan correctly, mm. you know, plan for it. Which, this is a tangent, but that's what I tried to do last night in your, your Friday campaign. Oh, right. Was I jumped out of character a little bit because we were about to encounter some some creatures we didn't know if they were good or bad i'm like okay wait guys let's put some thought into this Mm. you know so that'd be nice if players did that more but what are you gonna do and i would love to talk about that for a second do you mind let's do it no i don't mind at all so i would love that as well as a gm like it makes Mm. me happy seeing that and what i saw happen last night kind of it let me see one of the formulas for how that can work Mm -hmm. and it's usually one person will stop and come out of character and pause and be like hey let's talk about this before we go and it becomes a a, just like we've kind of talked about is a yes and type thing like Mm -hmm. the way me and you would play like all of a sudden it's no longer trying to like assert your idea as the dominant idea it's like I'm going to do this what do you think you should do? And they're like, yeah, you do that, and right. I'll do this. And then the other right, players right. are like, yeah, and then I'll do this, mm-hmm. and then I'll do this. And then as the GM, I kind of listened to each of their thing, and then I allowed it to be played out in the order that I thought made sense for what they were trying to do. Right. And it probably took 15 to 10 minutes of just planning, everyone saying what they wanted, Mm-hmm. Then the action happened, and that took about five minutes for it to play out, and it went very easily. So mm-hmm. I love that, and I, I hate that it comes from theater, but it's such a brilliant thing to use in D&D is yes and. Mm-hmm. Whether it's your character's getting fucked, man, like you're getting ruined by the GM, just, yeah, go with it. Roll with that shit, man. Yes and what? Let's. I'm going to do this, or oh shit you know like react in a way it's like right it's and I think yeah, this is I'm learning <laughs> we've all talked about how this is us learning this game and I've definitely been that player I've talked about that is railed against the DM so mm-hmm. really letting go of that has been really cool and fun mm-hmm. to play with so that's my tangent I loved seeing it last night yeah and I th- I think the yes and really points to something we don't talk about much in D&D, which is your interest has to shift from making your character do the most optimal thing to, oh, what's going on in a wider context? What's happening in the scene? Hmm. Is it cool if my character gets hurt right now? Is that the coolest thing that could happen? Is that the most dramatic thing? Hmm. Yes, then GM, do that. Like, you know... Is it cool? Is it the coolest thing if my character gets killed, or triumphs, or whatever? It doesn't really matter if it's good or bad for your character. Is it the coolest thing for the scene, yeah. or the campaign, or the adventure, what's ever going on? And that's a hard thing to let go of, especially at first. Oh yeah. You kind of want to be precious with your characters, and there's nothing wrong with that. Well, no, but no. it's not as fulfilling, at least for me. Right. You will, and it. You know. When you first start touching that after you've been guarded about something so long and mm-hmm. you start tasting that feeling, you're like, oh, this is fun or like, the, oh, this is fun. I like this. Oh. And then, oh. you know, it and I'm not saying anyone should rush that feeling because you need to be ready for it or else it's not fun. 
So. Right. You gotta you gotta come to it in your own way. Yeah. But yes, and is a it's a stupid way to point at something that's kind of profound within the RPG RPG oh. RPG genre right. of games. Um, so yeah, one big combat to kind of get us back on track. Yeah. Uh, I would say simple resolvable plot. This is happening, or this is a problem. It, and the problem suggests a clear way for the PCs to solve it. There's treasure, um, lost treasure in the mountains. There's a hostage that needs to be rescued. There's a magic item to retrieve. Right. Something right. where it's like this, uh, this, and this, and then make it linear. Don't 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 be too sandboxy about it because you're going to expand the time it's going to take to play through it. Right. Don't quite a bit. You don't give your adventurers three like exciting things that are happening right then because you yeah. don't know which unless you have a plan for each thing to like resolve the one shot mm-hmm. because they're totally. gonna they're gonna sh- they're gonna chase the shiny thing mm-hmm. even if you're not if it's not the shiny thing you thought you dropped and right so be careful here's a play on words they're gonna chase the shiny thing meaning whatever they're taking a shine to right. in the moment right. That and it it'll... may be the stupid, you're like something you careless, carelessly said in session. Right. Didn't even play. Oh, so much. So yeah. much. And I'm going to, I was going to say the, this linear idea is contradicting like the one shot I ran on the, on the podcast where I made it much more open and you could take paths, um, which didn't work as well as I would have liked because again the more open you get the more time you need to resolve whatever you're going to do I found right as I'm learning more about it so if you're just going to do like a, a one shot especially for players who who may not know the game as well the more linear you keep it the funner their experience will be yeah so just bam bam really clear really simple your players often if you make it more complex they're not going to know what they're supposed to do. That's they're true. Be like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do right now, DM. What's what? It, where are we supposed to go? So the it, you'll feel like you're making it really dumb. You're not. Yeah. It, Put clues everywhere. Everywhere. Ex- just lay it out on the table. No pun intended. Right. Because and that I sorry to relate this again to last night. Rude. Um, laying things out plainly helps the the PCs not plan for a bunch of crazy shit that's not going to happen right they don't have to so last night i kind of laid some things out and there was a little bit of confusion and eric kind of out of character was like wait i need to know if this is what's being said are you saying this and i was like yes that is what i'm saying and you're like Mm -hmm. cool and then we went back into character and we moved right forward it made it Mm -hmm. you know and in those moments you know you got to when a player does that, that means that there's some ambiguity that you're not solving for them with what right. you're saying. And I, I loved that you did that. Mm-hmm. It caused me to stumble, but I was like, you know what? No, that, that is what I'm saying. Yes, I shouldn't be hiding that because I am trying to make it obvious, but it wasn't obvious enough. Right. And it's kind of weird how I think both of us have done this where we want to hide all these cool secrets. Mm-hmm when really we're hiding the wrong things where it's like, no, make that stuff obvious and hide stuff that's optional. Mm. So like cool lore and Easter eggs and things, all the stuff that's necessary to the campaign moving forward or the adventure or the one shot, put that front and center with a big spotlight on it. Yeah. the It's the D&D equivalent of like the little glowing uh, light that you're like, oh, that person has a quest for me or right. the question mark above the NPC's head. I'm right. like, a Final Fantasy game. That's so true. That's, so true. You know? Um, so that's all I have to my philosophy. I'm not the most experienced in building one-shots, but once you start running sessions, uh, a session really frames what a one-shot is going to be like in terms of time and pacing and, and flow. Right. Well, so. as far as uh, planning a one-shot, the other things that I put down mm-hmm. uh, was you could either just as like planning for three to five NPCs Mm -hmm. and now you can either do that or like two factions 
And each one of those will have a person that the characters Mm -hmm. talk to. And if you're doing a faction thing, that's probably going to be where your plot hook is just to do something for one of these factions. So two factions for a one-shot, totally doable. Three to five NPCs, that's even like five is a lot. Mm -hmm. That's just in case. Three NPCs that you think that they may encounter, boom. There's your kind of a rough draft of things you will need or would want to include in creating a one shot. It's beautiful. I didn't even think about the faction thing. That's a that's a good idea. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um so let's actually pick a hook. Yeah. I just made a list of really generic hooks and I also have a Reddit page which has a fifty adventure hooks. And there's a bunch of cool ones on there. But I know you had two that you came up with. Mm-hmm. So let's start there. Well, the the first one let's talk about because the other one we can mention it, but it is definitely for a higher level one shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the lower level one could be that the players come across a caravan that's been looted and pillaged, and there's dead bodies, and you know you lay some hooks out for them to start looking in this stuff, mm-hmm. and as they're investigating it, the local kind of guard or constables or whatever approach and the players are then being blamed at that moment Mm -hmm. for this wrecked caravan and there's that could be the beginning of a one shot right there kind of have to solve the mystery have to prove your innocence right or etc exactly or that could just be scene one and you basically convince the guards oh we didn't do this and then there's a let's find out who did Mm -hmm. why did they type thing cool and then what was your second? Well, the second one was definitely a bit more brutal. Um, the players would have heard from wherever that there are people disappearing with no signs of a struggle. It's like mm-hmm. they just got up and left, but they're just gone mm-hmm. from some tiny little town out on the edge of the wilds. Mm-hmm. And you go out there, you fig- and as you're out there, what is actually happening is there's a local cave system and there's an aboleth that's coming out and stealing three people in the middle of the night using its mental ability to command and mm-hmm. taking people back to its cave and maybe it has like a nest where it's feeding baby aboleths i don't know right, right. but there's something nefarious right yeah or it's nefarious in the sense that it's just trying to survive and this village is just where it's at and that one aboleths are pretty they're cr or challenge rating is a little higher. Yeah. So this would be a good mid to high level one shot. And I just had an idea. Yeah. I'll cut this out, but um, it'd be cool. Maybe we should do like a low level one shot today. And then we can do another episode where we do a mid level and then do like a high level oh, yeah, yeah. one shot. Let's do that. So I think that way we can yeah. have like an ongoing series. Yeah, for sure. I would say. So today we'll do low level mm. one shot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do like the mistaken like you know uh the the pcs getting blamed Mm -hmm. um one idea i had too this is more high level but uh instead of people disappearing you have a town where the the dead keep rising Mm, okay attacking and they're low level and then you find out there's like an evil wizard like in the countryside that's that's raising uh raising the dead for some reason like maybe has a vendetta Right. So you could do some fighting, but also social. Like maybe he was thrown out of the town at some point. Oh, playing for something. Speaking of that, dude, mm-hmm. I there's I have two sentences right here, and I just realized that they're not part of the that they're part of the the one shot thoughts that I didn't mm-hmm. mention, and you just kind of mentioned it, and that is when you're thinking of your one shot, definitely. As you're planning it, try to think of ways that the party could solve this without combat. Right. So maybe there is an option of not combat, or maybe, you know, there is an option of combat, or, right. you know, right. throwing those things in there, just the idea of it, even if it's just a like, oh, this character right here would be willing to uh, be persuaded so this doesn't happen, or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And if the players stumble into that, that's super fun, and it's a random thing. So, yeah, just, right. just a cool little thought. And if you want to make your PCs have more, or I'm sorry, your NPCs have more depth, you can give them kind of a 
disposition. Mm-hmm. So like how like how hostile are they towards the party? What secrets do they have? Yeah. What is their kind of um, T biffs, traits, bonds, ideals, flaw, secrets? You could get more into that if you want to have alternative solutions. Again, the more solutions you have in this one shot, you have to make all of those clear if you want the PCs to know, oh, I can do this. Mm-hmm. Because even though it seems like, hey, you can do whatever you want, a lot of times the PCs are looking to the DM like, okay, how do we yeah. solve this? And so they need a little bit of direction. Yeah, um, They don't have to follow the direction, but they people want to know when they're playing okay how do i how how do you want me to play the game yeah how do you want me to do this um so those are cool i went way more generic yeah. where my hooks were like maybe it's goblins or kobolds mm. or a damsel in distress a lost treasure lost child or friend uh evil townsfolk oh, which nice. i thought would be fun That's where the town fun. is actually the villains right. and that's a nice trope uh, flipped on its head where maybe you have an orc tribe that's attacking this town and you're trying to defend the town and then you find out the town are actually the villains or something. Oh, yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah. Something just where it's like, you know, playing again with these fantasy tropes that we have been fed for forever. Yeah. The undead one we already talked about and then Magic MacGuffin, which is like there's a magic goblet or there's a magic ring or some kind of a, just something to get the players to go do the thing mm-hmm. um, and my I, I didn't really think about it but my hooks kind of work in tandem with environment so if it's evil townsfolk maybe they're on a floating island or maybe they're in a city oh, okay. or it's in the ruins so it's a town that's it's a settlement that's built up in old ruins and maybe those ruins are sacred to this orc tribe or so I got I was way more generic not realizing I'm kind of going to build a specific hook as I put more pieces together, right. which is not what we have to do right, right. today, but that's that was my thinking. And then I have, like I said, I looked up adventure hooks because I just kind of ran out of ideas, and I was like, I feel like I need to have more for the episode. And so Reddit has, this, Reddit has a bunch of cool stuff, but... Um, This is from the Dungeons and Dragons subreddit. And this is, uh, the title of it is uh, 50 Adventure Hooks to Steal for Your Game. And these are very specific. So this first one is really cool. Uh, A strange looking low hanging cloud sits over the village. What's really odd is that despite the wind, the cloud never moves. That's all it gives you. So it's like, ooh, mystery. What's going on there? Right. And there's a bunch of them. I'm not going to read through all 50, of course. But one that I read last night that I can't find is that there's a there's like a, a mysterious man with a sour look on his face sitting in this tavern, and he suddenly rushes out of the tavern for some reason. Maybe he gets a message, and a, a vial of green liquid falls out of his pocket, which the adventurers find. I'm like, I like that one. I like that too. That's that peaks the again that peaks my interest as a player like ooh what is this right. and maybe you find out like this is a uh, some kind of potion to turn people into undead or something nefarious like that. Oh, I like that. I actually yeah. that idea is what's really stirring my brain. The the vial. Yeah, because when you talked about it earlier, I like that idea because it also gets you, you know, because this is like we're doing a low level one shot. It also gets right. you to like. I know it's generic and simple, but for what I think this is, starting at the tavern. Right. I think that that's a really, it's obviously it's a trope, but for beginners, it's a solid good trope that's comfortable. And they don't need to explain if they know each other. They could all be there for completely different reasons. Right. Like you're just in this tavern, you've stopped in this little town for the night. Mm -hmm. Bam, done. So that's cool. Should we yeah, pick that as our hook? Let's do that as the hook. I like that. Cool. I think that thanks that's Reddit. A, you guys are beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Reddit. Sorry, go ahead. No, dude. Reddit is for sure. Like I am following so many things so in many. Reddit, and I'm like, it's my new thing that I probably spend more time scrolling through. Mm-hmm. Is my like D and D stuff on Reddit and just reading crazy ideas and. It's got so much. There's so much content out there. It's wild. Mm-hmm. 
you got random tables, adventure hooks, you've got people just having a problem, like a DM, like, hey, my party is doing this, can anybody help me solve it? You got tons of good advice, and I, I feel like at least my mind, before I ever went on Reddit, I kind of felt like, oh, that play, it's, they're gonna, they're gonna troll you. Right. Like, they're just, just vicious, but it's actually, if you find the right communities, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's usually pretty, pretty cool. Like, lots of helpful people. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, okay. So we're going to say tavern. We're going to take the, the vial of green liquid as our hook, mm-hmm. which I think is great. That feels like an actual, like, ooh, yeah, that that grabs my attention. Yeah. Um, let's pick an environment. I was thinking small town. Small town. But I'm saying, like, okay, are we in the plains? Are we in the oh. jungle? Are we, uh, is it urban? Small town, not urban, obviously. I would say almost like, you know, prairie ish you know okay some so trees. plains yeah plains there's some trees not a lot of trees grasses you know just a little okay little uh standard type of stuff you know? i like it so we're we're in the plains um we're in a small town we're doing i'm just gonna call it the vial of liquid yeah trope let's figure out let's actually answer for the dm side of things Okay, what's actually going on then? Mm-hmm. What does this liquid do? Who is this person? What is the conflict or problem the PCs need to solve? I think my brain keeps going to that this vial is something that this person is going to use on the well. They're going to dump mm-hmm. it in the well, uh, and it's so he's gonna he's gonna dose it in the well. Mm-hmm. To com- is this the only dose, or does he have like a vat of this stuff? I think I think Somewhere. this is the only dose, the only dose. So him losing it, he's highly motivated to get it back. Right, absolutely. Okay, um, what does it do? I want to kind of incorporate one that you, uh, one of the ideas you said as well. Do it. Uh, it turns people into undead. Okay, so he's going to dose the well. It's going to turn the town into a group of undead. Mm-hmm. All right. So who is this villain? Well, I think that this is the one that works for somebody. So he's kind of like a, he's like a lackey for right. somebody else, maybe a lich. Like he's an agent for a, a lich or a, a wizard, a necromancer. Okay. That's right. not evil quite. wizard, necromancer, lich, and that's also cool because if the players like the one shot, you have kind of a looming shadow in the background of this evil wizard that the PCs could come up against later right or it's just the mysterious figure you know um so we have the adventure hook villain drops a vial he's going to poison the well quote unquote and he works for some uh big bad right um let's give him a name you have some names i know you gotta i have a big list of names let's get up i'm going to just throw out a few and we'll vote cool Hidroff Grog. Oh, Lord. That's a good one. Uh, Rather Salette, which actually sounds kind of like a villain name. I like that one. Zizul Hibros. That's okay. Um, Ka Raluz. I still like the Sellet guy the most. Um, was that the Rather Sellet? Mm-hmm. Sellet? Okay, we'll do that one. I think he, that's just like you said. Like, here again, I'm like, sounds like a slinky bad guy emaciated pale skin Mm. yeah for sure um i like that um okay so we have his motive we have like what he's intending to do now he loses the vial do we want to set like do we want to have a clock for how long it takes him to realize it's gone or uh how do we want to handle that there's plenty of ways to do it i'd say when Because he's probably on his way to go handle it. So when he gets to wherever he's going, the well, he'll notice it's gone. Okay. I would say maybe he has a few undead henchmen that are, like, cloaked. So, like, maybe in the the flavor, when you start it, when the PCs are coming in, they notice some weird figures outside the tavern. Mm. Like, because they're going to encounter these characters but as we as we're talking about this, my brain keeps. I just thought of this as the big bad. Maybe it's like a like a Doctor Frankenstein guy, 
and he needs mm. more zombies or undead to make something in his laboratory. Okay, I got to I got to go with the classic angle cuz I like that. Um maybe he's getting this we'll call it corpse juice. That's not going to be the official name. That's our placeholder. Um he's getting it from the evil wizard, but he's trying to revive like his love. Oh, okay. He's trying to revive his his one true love, so he's doing something evil but what he thinks is good. He's like uh, you know, the ends oh, justify it. the means. So it would he be going rather than poisoning the well? He's gonna like try to go dig her up, maybe with the body. Well, I think he already has her. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe Rather used to live in the town, or he's a local. Mm. Like he lives kind of. He has his laboratory out in the wilderness, and he often um, comes to town. But he's shady. People don't really like him. And lately, ever since or six months ago, ever since his love died, he's been acting weird. Right. So he has her corpse, but he needs other body parts. And because it's D&D, he's turning the townsfolk into undead. Right. Because that's ridiculous. Um, so he can harvest their bodies. Parts. He can harvest their parts, yeah. And maybe this doesn't just turn them undead. Maybe it he can call them to his... Laboratory. Laboratory. Yeah. But maybe little does he know this... Uh, he is going to like do the well or something... Um, because he was misinformed by the big bad that it's not actually what it is. So the big bad is trying to use him to poison the whole town oh, or something. Right. So there's more of a, there's a larger plot going on. And I still think you could get this done. Like you could even get to the scientists in three, three sets, three set pieces. So set piece one is the tavern. Yep. Set piece two is the well. I'd say the confrontation, yeah. Confrontation set piece three would be his laboratory mm-hmm. out in the wilderness. So obviously you wouldn't spend much time them getting to the laboratory. Right. Now here's a question because again we're trying to keep it short and sweet. Mm-hmm. Laboratory, you could do it where it's like out in the wilderness mm-hmm. and kind of hand wave it like, okay, you get there, you cut to the next scene. But what if his laboratory's under the town? Yeah. Oh yeah. So like it's part of solving it is realizing oh he's underneath the town doing nefarious things right so we could do something like that to kind of keep it contained and and short and sweet for this one shot Mm -hmm. and maybe it's just like one of the houses has a basement that he's just like burrowed deep into the city and he's he's made tunnels underneath like every yeah (laughs) every house or something over the last however long Mm -hmm. So he's using, and and people have been missing too. I would say that's a clue. Oh, yeah. it's like townsfolk have been missing for the last six months, which starts to line up. Oh, that's when Rather's fiance died. Right. Wait, that's weird. What? Mm. Um, okay. So we have our three set pieces. Um, we have kind of our general plot, very very broad, but we and we have motivation for the villain. So let's just, I would say. Should we go through each set piece and kind of be like, here are the clues, right. here's kind of the objectives, mm-hmm. how do we make it really clear, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. Okay, tavern is our first set piece. Right. So obviously we want to have we have they encounter Rather, but he I would say leaves during the flavor text. Mm-hmm. So we want to have some NPCs in the tavern, probably the bartender absolutely. or the tavern keep. Um, do we want to name name them? Yeah, absolutely. Do you have names, or you want me to go, uh, go to... You just throw the names out. I didn't do names, because I... Okay. It's, I, I knew we'd need it, so I'm like, right. I'm just going to go to Fantasy Name Generator. And uh, do such like a, a great list. tune right there. Yeah. Fantasy Name Generator is one of the best friends of a DM. Holy it's one and of it, those go-tos. It has naming so many things. Like, you can... You, it, everything. Everything. And I... World of Warcraft, historical... Doctor Who... Cultural Doctor Who D and D everything fan, just like folklore yeah yeah you if you're looking for naming a building in a sci-fi environment they have a name generator you, that has names of mountains yeah I used it yesterday um, I'm just gonna pick this one yeah uh, the the tavern owner's name is Tiao Ulim nice um, what are we gonna say there let's just we can always change it but what race are they Tiefling. What's their gender? Male. 
All right, so Tiao Ulim, do we want to have anybody, any other prominent NPCs in the tavern? I was going to say maybe one other person, the town drunk. And maybe the town drunk has seen... Right, he has info. Seen some things. Yeah. Nobody believes him. And let, um, let's call him Rhaegar Otik. Ancestry? Half-orc. Or, uh, actually, I'll pose this to you. Half-orc or gnome? Definitely gnome. There it is. Gnome. And I'm going to say it's gnome female. Oh, okay, I like that. Okay. Um, and you could do, I would say the... Rhaegar is a good source to have a bunch of clues. Like mm. maybe have a, a 2D6 table and you roll on that and you have a, some stuff that's not exactly true, but the t- the town drunk is kind of just spouting what seems like nonsense. Right. Like tunnels under the yeah. town and like undead walking the streets at night and um, the rest of the town's kind of giving the, the gnome the side eye. Right. And as you as you do, if you talk to this gnome, I'd even have some of the other random people that are close just mm-hmm. make offhand comments as right. Rhaegar tells stories. It might be fun to have some tension where like you have townsfolk arguing with Rhaegar. Oh yeah. Because people are afraid and they're not sure what's going on or they don't want to admit that there's a problem oh, as well. That you could have the trigger be what if they pick up the bottle, mm-hmm. they hear the argument start. That's when right. it, like you can pull them to the argument to try and get more info. Right. Or they can ignore it and try and chase down homeboy. Right. So maybe there's a couple ways you could start it too in that in that case. So you could have like you do your flavor text and Rather drops a bottle as it leaves, that's when we start. Mm. Or you could just have the adventurers in there, they're getting drinks. Mm. Maybe you have like a four tick clock and it's kind of hand wavy, so you're like, a little bit of time passes. Mm-hmm. Everybody orders food or, you know, they're just kind of talking. Um, and then uh, suddenly something triggers Rather to leave and the bottle drops. And you have to make the bottle really obvious if you want the PCs to pick it up. Mm-hmm. So how would we make it really obvious? I'd say like a sound. Like a... Like a ting, 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 ting. Right, and it so also it bounces. A, almost like it has like a, a reflective quality as well, so it catches their eye, the green in it. Okay. It might be cool, too, if everybody reacts weirdly. Like there's kind of a... <gasps> everyone looks at it, and then they purposefully ignore it mm. besides the drunk or something like that. Right. So they're all... It, the PCs get this idea that everyone is acting really weird right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. So um, the next question is, how do we get them to the well? So let's let's assume they take the clue, they take the hint, they pick up the vial. How do we get them to be like, oh, we need them to get to the well. We need them to not like go exploring the town right obviously plan they might do that regardless of every best laid plan so have a very rudimentary map like here's a blacksmith here's the the goods store is there a weapon you could be like it's a small town there's no weaponsmith yeah there's no blacksmith there's no here. weapon shop there's a, a good store and there's a blacksmith yeah that's about, oh yeah and the blacksmith mostly just repairs stuff that they need repaired around you know he doesn't really make weapons right you know it'd be fun well Maybe the town drunk is the blacksmith. Oh, that's so you have brilliant. to get the blacksmith to, to sober up before she'll, <laughs> she'll repair your weapons. Right. Um, so my thinking is, and again, this is breaking our rule a little bit, but you start a clock once the... I kind of like the idea that Rather leaves a little bit after you start. Mm-hmm. You start a clock where two of those undead are going to come back in. Oh, okay. And they're really easy to beat. Maybe they have like one or two hit points. So combat ensues. It's guaranteed to end within like two rounds. Right. The players are trying to figure out, because uh, they saw Rather drop this bottle. They start asking about it. It's like, oh, he li- he spends a lot of time by the well. Maybe that's even how he gets to his laboratory or right. something. Try to tie those in. So give them impetus to be like, okay, wait a minute. These guys just tried to pick up this bottle. This belongs to Rather. He... Tends to hang out by the well for some reason. That's weird. Yeah. So, do you feel like we should lay any more clues? Do you feel like that's not enough? 
feel like it's all, it's just barely enough. That's yeah. I think there should be deep. one more clue of some sort. So what's another good clue? Um, we could also just have uh, optional stuff if they delve in, like um, Rather's fiance died six months ago. Mm-hmm. People have been disappearing. Um, he's he's been he hasn't been himself since that happened. He's known to wander the streets at night. Right. You could also add that Rather's wife was one of the main people that helped get the well dug. Oh, I like that. And that's that's why he spends a lot of time near it. And that's ultimately what caused her demise, maybe. Okay, so the well had something to do with it. Maybe secretly Rather blames the town. Right, right. Like he, she spent more time building the well and helping the town than with him in her final days. And like in taking care of herself. She really, Ta- yeah. this well was very important for this community right here. Yeah. Maybe two people hear wailing at the well for oh, some reason. Sure. Like there's some kind of howling. We can fill in why that is later. It's just, yeah, I'd say it's just the wind and the way it's positioned. Or maybe if he, his laboratory, like, there's some kind of secret oh, door, especially yeah. if you want the well to leave to it. When he creates these zombies or whenever he's doing his nefarious work, you it's the evil necromancy he's using yeah. is uh, the new zombies make this certain kind of wailing. Right. Or when he tries to revive her. I almost like it, like, if she's dead, maybe he turned her into a zombie, but it didn't. She's just a zombie. So now he's making more zombies to get his revenge. Or oh, I love that! I actually love that. And he probably keeps her guarded, down, right, in a cage in or the something. laboratory. Yeah, right. So I feel like that's really good. That gets us to the well. Mm. What do we see at the well? I would feel like this is our investigation scene. Mm-hmm. So the location or the set piece and the scene coincide. I would say. Right. I would say it's just the. You would either want to encounter him at the well or like tracks that lead to the well and then lead away from the well that it could be his tracks possibly would be a clue. I would say, yeah, definitely footprints. I would save him. Okay, yeah. Like make him the final combat in the cool. laboratory. Right. So you find maybe multiple tracks mm-hmm. and maybe if they they keep investigating you actually see some of the tracks have like drag marks because it's like zombies that can't really walk very well. Um, You could even have him have a specific, maybe he has specific boots or something if they look into it more. Yeah, yeah. So they could, if they really are inquisitive in the tavern, they have more information to deal it out. I would say maybe there's a glyph on on the well. So this is like, there. it has something to do, somehow you activate it, it opens up the passageway to the the laboratory mm. laboratory so what else could we do maybe if they come at a certain time like if they come within a certain t- framework they hear the wailing oh okay if they spend more time at the tavern they don't to it that'd be fun little just again it's they're not gonna fail if they don't hear it right but it's like an extra easter egg um what are some other clues we could do I'm trying to think um what's a good clue hey wait maybe i have a random table that has something maybe the dmg ian and i were remembering have a bunch of cool uh adventure tables so in chapter what is this chapter four yeah chapter three um there's got you've got adventure hooks villains patrons things like that Gunner goals, framing events. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Side quest twists. When do we want to have the big combat? Is that I would say in the laboratory. Okay. Lots of zombies. Maybe we could make um, Rather like a, an artificer, like kind of pull from that. We don't really, wouldn't fill out a whole sheet, but he would have like, he could throw like alchemical fire Mm -hmm. and he could he had certain layer actions again if this is low level they're not going to be crazy but you can command the zombies to do something attacks right and have it in a way where the main thing you're fighting are these zombies yeah and you defeat them and then they can choose whether to capture rather and take him back or they can kill him 
the the PCs have the choice of how to what to do with Rather. Mm-hmm. And also what to do with his caged wife. Yeah, his wife's there, and maybe they don't realize, like, why is there a zombie in a cage? So, right. again, leave clues to have to investigate. If they investigate more, rather. For sure. They're like, oh, my God, that's his wife. Like, he brought her back. Um, and so I would say, let's figure out, okay, how do you get to the laboratory right. from the well? So it seems like maybe if there's a glyph on the well, it's a button or there's a passphrase or something. If he's like an alchemist, scientist type, it's probably not going to be straight magic. Mm -hmm. It's going to be some kind of passphrase or button or maybe it's a small puzzle, like really easy to solve. Right. That's risky with PCs. For sure. Um, I like the idea of the uh, having some sort of rune or mm-hmm. some basic magic type thing that's very very simple or a contraption that he has used to open a secret door near the fountain or near the well you could do something like um maybe the rune is also on the vial so oh, you see the you vial go. the rune's the same thing and maybe it's a passphrase and it's like his wife's name oh, okay something. right so, but again, how do you relay that information to the PCs is the question. Like, how do they get, what are the clues around, and it could be in the tavern too, we can add some stuff, but um, maybe he's heard saying his, maybe, here we go, maybe he's heard crying his wife's name by the well. Right. Oh, I like one that. Thing. There's one clue. <clears throat> Another clue could be maybe the rune lights up when you speak the name so like it opens the door that's somewhere but Mm -hmm. it has like a faint glow that kind of lights up and then slowly fades so if the players run into it they can see there's a light that slowly fades right there right uh that one that's not really that one's pretty good that's not i mean it's a good little extra but it doesn't point them to like okay here's the name um it seems like maybe you could have him maybe he has a notebook and he leaves in haste so if they investigate there's a notebook in the tavern and you don't say okay passphrase right well let's pick the wife's name what's the wife's name gertrude Um, gertrude love it maybe he left his notepad on the table exactly that's what that's what i was thinking so they could find the name in there and they could also find information that he has a laboratory there's some kind of laboratory somewhere um, Gertrude's name is very prominent and it seems like you could have like um, not passphrase but like something colon Gertrude yeah and then if they ask like the bartender they find out the wife's name was Gertrude so that's two clues hmm. and then what would be a third clue you could use the drunk again use the drunk but what would the clue be what would the content be uh, he just because he's the drunk, she's the drunk. She could say some wild shit about how. I mean, this is a big clue. Uh, she could say that she's seen the villain speak something into the well and then walk through. The a, well opens up, or something. right? Like there's a he door. keeps disappearing into the well, and everyone's like, "What are you talking about?" And she's like, "I've seen it." Yeah, that's a good one. I think that's a really good one. So that would be our three clues. I think also we could say as extra flavor if they keep inquiring that Rather absolutely hates the well. Oh, yeah. So why is he always spending time there? Um, Okay, so they get there. I feel like that's enough clues. And then three clues just to follow the three clue rule. We have the footprints. We have the glyph. Um, What would be another clue? Would the wailing, like maybe if they they keep listening, and this would change it so the wailing would just have to be there. Right. Um, if they keep listening, they can hear wailing coming from the well. So they speak the name, and maybe the well opens up like it's got a it's a false thing, so it rolls away, and there's steps or something. Right. Like by the well, something kind of cool and and nefarious. So I feel like that's pretty good. Um, and then what about the laboratory? Don't really need clues because this is kind of the climax we're in the lair Mm. um 
how many zombies? Let's assume there's four party members of level one. Okay. In there. So they're nice and squishy. Three zombies, maybe. I would say let's do five zombies, give them less hit points, okay. and lower their attack bonuses. Okay. So, so it feels more threatening, but they're not really... It's the same thing as having three, but they feel a little overwhelmed. There's one more than the party, and then you have Rauther... And I would say Rauther, instead of lair actions, maybe has a one-time action where he can command all the zombies to gang up on one of the heroes. Something mm. where it's like, oh, he can, he's powerful, he can do stuff. Right. Um, and then maybe why the fight is going on, we can have Rauther monologue. Right. Like, as it's going, he's like, I did this for good reasons. And maybe he keeps gesturing to... The zombie and calling her Gertrude or something like that. Right. And then I think that's pretty good. Yeah. I feel like that's a good outline. Obviously, why we're building it, if you've ever ran any kind of RPG, anything, you'll start to flesh it out more and more. You'll put in more NPCs. Um, I feel like you don't really need any more NPCs than that. Right. For a one shot that's nice and short. So, how does it resolve? I feel like if they kill. Router, you get one result. If they keep him alive, you get a second. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like there's any others? You feel like that's good? No, I think that's good. I think if you keep, okay. I think if you keep him alive and capture him, um, and you know you inform everybody to what's going on, and they call the local bigger people, mm-hmm. you know, to come and take him and to one of the bigger cities for what he was doing. Okay. But, I mean, that's just an idea. I would say if they kill him, and if he's not part of the combat, they're probably less likely to do so. Right. Like, they're not, unless they're really into the murder hobo thing, they might not be so inclined. Because he hasn't hurt anybody directly that they've seen. Like, right. he hasn't actually done anything. Turned yet. anybody into a zombie in front of their eyes. But it would be cool to really make it apparent at the res- resolution that all the zombies that they killed were townsfolk. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So lay on the guilt. Um, I would say that you kind of resolve it with maybe the town kind of mobs up. So he maybe he gets put in, maybe there's not a jail, but he gets put in the tavern, like locked in the tavern room. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe that wouldn't work, though, because it doesn't resolve it. Mm. So maybe he gets locked up and he's waiting to be taken to justice, like you're saying. If if they kill him... um, Maybe you would just have some kind of flavor text to kind of wrap it up, like uh, talk about the townsfolk and having a funeral not for him but for the wife and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And also, I guess you could have them deal with the wife too. Like if they discover it, like, hey, what do you want to do with the zombie in the cage? Right. And see what they say. Um, I would say regardless, they find a a letter in his pocket that's from the big bad. Oh, okay. And it's signed under like a pseudonym, but it's in very elegant handwriting. Somebody who's very well educated just as a little like, Oh, there's something else going on, but you, that's the very end. Right. So that's beautiful. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Let's name our one shot. I don't know. Uh, I got it. All right. Let's call it the well of broken souls. I like that. All right, listeners. Well, there is... There's a one-shot. A good example of how to brainstorm your way through a one-shot. I would say there's no right way to do it, but it'd be interesting if you you like the parameters we set and our philosophy on it. If you build a one-shot using, you know, any of our philosophy, let us know what you come up with. Right. Super cool to hear about. Mm-hmm. Um, you have any parting thoughts for our listeners? Oh, I have I have a little thing I want to chat about since Please, we're here at the go, end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Been playing a lot of Elden Ring, mm-hmm. and it's real good. I recommend nice. running Magic if you're going to play that game and you're not used to a Souls game. Uh, Magic has changed the entire way that I play, and I'm actually like further in the game. I actually beat one of the first bosses just a little bit ago. Nice. And uh was quite impressed. Like, it still obviously is, even with magic, it's still like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. It's a hard game. But the, sure. the magic gives you an equalizer against some of those villains that I, it blew me away how much, 
yeah, how much I'm enjoying the magic side of it. But that being said, I sort of incorporated a little bit of like the ideas that happened to me in Elden Ring into mm-hmm. Forged last night. Oh, nice. Uh, and that was when you guys were on the journey to get to the, the doorway. Mm-hmm. And how there were those huge things kind of lumbering across trails and you guys were having to stealth or do whatever. Because mm-hmm. I, I planned, like, just because I'm used to some characters, they usually charge into battle and do crazy shit. So I was like, I don't know if they're going to, like, this might take a lot longer. But I had modeled a lot of enemies after just horrific things I'd seen in Elden Ring, but gave nice. them the flavor of, like, what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. And I even had, like, they weren't really stat blocks, but they were kind of, if you battled these things, what kind of would happen. Mm-hmm. And it was very much Elden ring esh where it was, like, taking a hit from one of them was a bad, bad, bad thing. Mm-hmm. But it was also, you could, like, run in and do a bunch of stuff, and then it'd have one big attack that it would do. and Right. Be uh, ouchy. Yeah. So I was just, El- nice. Elden Ring's awesome, y'all. Highly recommend it. It's a super it. cool game. I haven't played it as much, but it's... It's very fun. Yeah. It's they made they made it good. And I've been exploring like crazy. Like I haven't even been going straight to bosses. Mm-hmm. Like I've been just running around like finding different areas and I've stumbled into like I have a huge chunk of the map now from just mm-hmm. Lemuria. Oh, you actually picked up the pieces. Yeah, dude. And nice. it is I got my first piece. Nice. It is so big and so vast and so crazy. Mhm. Oh man, so much fun! So yeah, that's that's my parting thought. Uh, again, take inspiration from wherever, for sure. And when it comes to one shots, less is always more. Oh, so much! Like it what you plan is going to take up more time almost always. So right. Um, Speaking of yeah. that, like I feel like what we just planned isn't enough. Like it feels like oh that's right. not very much, and then I think about it, I'm like actually, it is that is plenty. Yeah, because you, it's not just these, it, we're not building nouns, this is all verbs where it's going to be in motion and the players are going to do things you don't expect mm-hmm. and you're going to have to stop and check rules and so some players not going to know their character very well or their class and the, pl- the combat's going to go away you didn't expect and they're not going to pick up on clues. There's going to be all kinds of stuff that goes wrong and takes up way more time than you thought. Absolutely. Um, so... There you go, listeners. Yeah. Built a one shot. This is our low level one shot. So at some point we'll come back and do a mid level one shot where we can make it a little crazier. Um, but maybe at some point we'll we'll play through this one shot so people can hear how it's going. What it sounded uh, like. Hear, yeah, hear what it sounds like and how much time it actually takes. Right. Sweet. All right. Is that is it me this time? I think it's you this time. Ooh. Oh. Sing it. Stay sweaty, baby. And uh, use force damage. Like, subscribe.